Hi there, welcome to my video memories of Vietnam. I was there late 1971 to early 1972. And like the screen says, this might be a little boring. Uh, it's filmed in Super 8 film and then transferred to uh, digital media and the, the quality isn't great. The film was expensive. I was a, a poor E5 in the Air Force and you only get 50 feet of film on a cartridge. So uh, the film went quickly So and I didn't know how to shoot movies. So anyway, it's uh, this is more of a reminder for me on the internet uh, and some Vietnam vets might find some of the scenes of uh, Tan San Nude Air Base interesting. Uh, so uh, sit back and uh, I'll just pop in every now and then and uh, add a little commentary. And this is uh, of course Headquarters 7th Air Force. I think General William Westmoreland was the commander. across from the fl flight line and uh, there was just air traffic coming and going all the time. UH-1, Hueys, uh, a lot of CH-47 Chinooks, uh, DC-3 or the uh, C-47 military variant, DC-4, C-54 Skymasters, etc, etc. So these were two-story barracks uh, upstairs and downstairs. Each had a Mama San Will chipped in a few bucks and Mama San would uh, uh, make beds, shine shoes, do the wash. Uh, they, they did the wash by beating the clothes on, on concrete culverts and <laughs> all of my underwear had holes in them by the time I got home. So these were open bay barracks, uh, two bunks to each little area. Uh, just as I was getting ready to leave, they uh, came with some plywood and they were going to make some dividers. And my buddy and I uh, were had a day off so we said, you know, hey, let's hop on one of these Navy uh, Chinooks and just do a little sightseeing in South Vietnam since I was stationed on the base and didn't leave it very often. Uh, so we got on one of these as you can see and that of course wasn't the one. Uh, but the Navy made a regular supply run uh, in the south. And the uh, first place we stopped was on the ship. Pretty neat. Uh, I think that was my first helicopter ride and uh, certainly the first time I'd ever landed on a ship. There's our door gunner. And fortunately uh, he came to attention a couple of times with the gun but he never had to shoot it. Fortunately we, we never took any fire. So this ship is probably well, I don't know, four or five, six miles offshore, something like that. I have no idea what kind of ship that is. Um, I have no idea why we landed. I assume it was to uh, shuttle personnel back and forth. And uh, interesting to note that the entire morning that we were on this Chinook, the pilot never, uh, let's see, he did shut the engine down there. Uh, once we were, we landed, uh, uh, in South Vietnam somewhere. He never shut the engines off, always kept it running. Here I am with my little uh, Super 8 uh, camcorder case. Uh, man, oh man, that was so many years ago. Dark hair. Yeah, say, say hi. And a shot of the Navy. Uh, the hair dress code was the sideburns could not extend past the ear opening and uh, hair could not touch the ears uh, but some of these Navy guys it looks like they were really uh, pushing the limits I guess they had a pretty good uh, CO of course helicopter the pilot in command is right seat another shot of the gun and we're getting ready to take off yeah there we are and you'll notice that box uh, uh, it says air conditioner. <laughs> we were uh, taking air conditioners and refrigerators out to, to the hinterlands, so uh, it, it wasn't all toughing it. Yeah, now we landed somewhere to pick up and or drop off stuff. 
and this is where the pilot never shut the engines down so um, I have no idea where this was there's a village across the way there and there's a I can't figure out if that's 5.56 millimeter or a larger caliber I can't tell if it's on a clip or not and we're getting refueled that uh, tan uniform in the Air Force those were called 1505 so that was kind of the office dress and I don't have a clue what that yellow sign meant probably don't go past this or you'll get shot something like that always got to have paperwork there's my buddy Homer uh, I think we were in upstairs barracks I'm not sure and uh, I he was uh, stationed with me somewhere in the US and then we uh, hooked up again in Vietnam couldn't believe it these little uh, uh, taxis if you will are, we call them hop tax and that's how you got around the big base so it, it the price was very inexpensive and you just hopped on one of those and they'd take you anywhere uh, some crew coming or going out on the flight line there and I can't tell if those are um, Fairchilds I don't know what those are looks like some DC-4s back there the C-54 variant and that's another Fairchild aircraft I don't know if that's a 119 or a 123 there's a uh, C-54 taxi in another shot from our barracks we had concrete barriers in between each barracks to act as a, a blast barrier because there was always a threat of rocket attacks we didn't have any while I was there fortunately a lot of traffic and Tonsonut well they don't call it that of course now but uh, it's still the primary airport in all of Vietnam huge air base everything you could possibly want was on the air base you uh, ate there you got entertained there uh, you worked there slept there There's a lot of recreation facilities available I spent a lot of my time in the photo hobby shop uh, developing and printing uh, black and white pictures a place called the dark room in Los Angeles did the transferring from uh, the Super 8 video Super 8 film to uh, video they, they did a decent job of it quality wasn't great to begin with that is a O one bird dog a Cessna there's a C-47 general purpose transport there was a AC-47 variant of that which was the spooky gunship and uh, Air America uh, the CIA they they flew a bunch of uh, Pilatus uh, short takeoff and landing aircraft out of there so they were probably landing in uh, Laos and Thailand and who knows where else that's a Gila port of course one of these shots we have a guard tower I think that's one of the that's uh, maybe a ground control station yeah there's a I think that's one of the guard towers a, uh, 352nd support squadron they had the air police yeah there's one of the Fairchilds in the air going somewhere I didn't realize it but Vietnam was a or the Tonson was a big staging area for Agent Orange uh, and they they kept the ends of the uh, runways clear of all kind of vegetation so there was a lot of spraying of Agent Orange around the base which surprised me because uh, I wound up having cancer um, most likely due to Agent Orange there's a like twice the cancer rate prostate cancer rate uh, for Vietnam vets and the general population the UH-1 Hueys and the Chinooks were just all day long all night long coming and going one thing I found out about the Chinook is you lose a rotor and there's no auto rotating 
down you there's no emergency down <laughs> the down is a crash as far as I know maybe somebody that flew that can uh, correct me on that yeah they had flat tires over there too there's one of the civilians a couple of Vietnamese kids there's a lot of Vietnamese working on the base and uh, you just hope that all of them were vetted and uh, not part of the uh, you know NVA or uh, communist cute kids I think that was somewhere around the uh, post office where I would check mail every day had uh, little mailboxes always look forward to a letter from home The uh, little girl on the right uh, <laughs> looks like a pajamas, and uh, a lot of the a lot of the kids dress like that. A lot of the grown-ups dress like that too. The ladies with their traditional uh, uh, funnel-type hat, whatever you call it. We drove to Benoit once, and the traffic in downtown Saigon is amazing. And nobody bothers to stop for traffic lights. It was uh, <laughs> not only dangerous being in country, it was also dangerous just driving in town. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, to all you Vietnam vets, uh, welcome home, brother. I'm glad I made it too.